and now it's time for Stack and Smash Radio. Amazing sales clerk checking out my pack. He's not part of the Jordy Foster fan, 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 fan club anymore that I created. Hey, 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 that's the end. I have a very hard time expressing my emotions, and I can't stop from yelling. What's going on, guys? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to episode number 15 of Stack and Smash Radio. I am here with Leering Rob. Rob Coakley is staring at me. And uh, I'm Jesse Wilkins, your host. That's right. You're, you're a no. co-host. Stay out of this co-owner. <laughs> uh, I'm Jesse Wilkins. <laughs> I'm also known as Double Take Jesse on We are here with the mustache. Yeah. Stack and Smash and Stash. Stack, stack and Smash, now Stash. Stack, Smash, now Stash. You might recognize this face from uh, the show that you just watched. So if you're tuned in live to the first ever live streaming broadcast of DirtyWaterNews.com, radio, TV, live stream, this is what's going on right now. You're seeing Steve again. He was just on. This is not a magic trick. He's back. He is now the guest for Stack and Smash Radio. And I'm going to talk like this for the rest of the show gets my point across get it love it stack and smash radio no punctuations <laughs> just talk how we want <laughs> just christopher walk christopher the whole thing. Style. Christo- welcome to <laughs> welcome to talk christopher walk on dirtywaternews.com <laughs> This is a, this is not a good start to the show. Hey, all thanks right. for having me on, guys. Yeah, all right. and thanks for coming <laughs> in. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been real here at Stack Smash. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, uh, on this show, we are going to talk with the wonderful, the talented, the ever so glorious Ronnie Barda, professional poker player. Uh, this man set a world record. We talked about it on a previous episode of Stack Smash Radio. He was uh, the first poker player ever to. Uh, to play poker. To come on Stack of Smash Radio. So it's a world record, and uh, and thank you for that, Ronnie. No, he uh, he's cashed in. He yeah, actually. I'll let you talk about that. You're the, you're the you pro. Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you just let me do my thing over here with your, with your shirt. This show sucks. <laughs> 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 so Ronnie Barta is actually a professional poker player. He, own, he won a World Series of Poker bracelet. He's from Brockton, Massachusetts. He now resides in Miami, Florida. He's very good at what he does. And He's actually broke records for being the first person from Brockton to be very good at what he does. <laughs> That's true, except it's the city of champions. Remember that. That's right. Remember that. All right. I'm going to write that down. It is what it is. It is what it is. Anyways, Ronnie did break that record, so congratulations to Ronnie for cashing in so many World Series events. Uh, that must mean that he's making a good amount of money. So so, so everyone here has the internet, so let's break, get into some entertainment news. Um, probably the most hilarious fight of all time has happened this week. Orlando Bloom is trying to fight Justin Bieber at a restaurant. Did you guys see this? I did not. No. Nope. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. So I guess it goes da- back to Justin Bieber was actually hooking up with Orlando Bloom's wife Ooh. at some point in time. And they met. E- they saw each other in a, in a restaurant. Justin Bieber went to like shake his, his hand. Wife, did his wife cheat on him or was it, it like it, a, it, it happened supposedly before? It, no, it happened after. So All right. Um, I'm not really sure of the exact details, but... I Orlando, I Orlando Bloom actually threw a punch at Justin Bieber and missed. That's so like what do you think <laughs> punch is harder out of those two? I don't know, but all, all I know is you give Orlando Bloom a bow and arrow, it just and, and, and a blonde wig, and yeah, yeah. done. And some elf ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's about all the Justin Bieber talk that we will ever have on Stack Smash. That's not even so true. So Orlando Bloom's gonna come up again? Justin Bieber's done. I like well. Orlando Bloom. Okay. I just like Justin Bieber. <laughs> Stay out of this. <laughs> so yeah, this isn't why we brought you on the show. <laughs> To Why expose us as believers. Yeah. Anyways, uh, also on the show, we are going to go over the uh, regular segment, the weird news story of the week, and we will go through the Stack and Smash countdown. This week, we are counting down the uh, five movies. Yeah, the five movies. <laughs> There's only five movies ever made. So we're going to count them down for you we're if you we're forgot. We're going to let you know yeah, which five are go good. Through five yeah. of them. And then uh, we are going to plug... We have an episode coming up very special. We spent this weekend, uh, we were out doing some filming in Salem, Massachusetts for our Halloween episode. Completely we'll sober. That is the first lie on Stack of Smash Radio. So, <laughs> anyways, so we, we have uh, a preview to show you yeah, on we'll that at we some point. Be, we will be airing that at some point. Um, and then we will go through the Stack of Smash dash of five furiously fast quintessential questions, which we'll be asking our, uh, our guest on the phone, Ronnie Barda. So it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. But let's, uh, let's get into what you did yesterday. You had a very crazy day going on yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it's crazy. I sat on the couch all day and played Xbox. Yeah. And, you know, it's just so crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the levels. 
four four <laughs> levels. It's crazy. And Titanfall. No, nah, I'm just kidding. No, uh, yesterday was a, a very interesting day for me. We went to um, we performed. Well, we didn't even really perform, but we were at Royale in Boston, down the street from here, actually, Royale Nightclub, as part of the Sensation Tour, which was uh, that's everybody that has a son. <laughs> All right, you're supposed to laugh at that. Sensation. I wish I could trigger the <laughs> fail whale right now, but I don't have the fail whale on deck. Yeah. It, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Anyways, the Sensation Tour was a tour with some of the bigger, the bigger Viners. Vine is, if you're not familiar with Vine, it is an app, social media, where you record these six-second videos and they just keep looping. And some of these kids got extremely famous. So in the honor to, uh, to be a part of that show, uh, our friend CJ Holland, who is a very talented artist that we've toured with and we produced for, and he's was out at the Grammys and everything like that. He was singing at the show, so we were able to kind of step in, and uh, and it, it was absolute madness. It was like a 13-plus show, and they didn't range. 13 age or 13 people? Both. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the it was a bunch of, like, literally 99% just, like, screaming little girls. Oh, perfect. And they were literally just screaming 99% of the time, and their parents were the only th- were the other 1% who were sitting in the back of the room with their uh and everything. Yeah. I know, uh, right? Can I add something? Yes. I actually have something to talk about. Taking the tea in here today, it was all 13 year olds and then the 1% parents. So I feel like yes. um, we can. Yeah, I, I connected. Following up their, their night at Royale by going to Katy Perry, which is right across the street from here. Speaking of which, we are broadcasting live from the greatest bar in Boston, 262 Front Street. If you're in the area, come on down. We're going to be giving away a pair of Red Sox tickets tonight to somebody here in the building. Should be awesome. Um, Spoiler alert. It's going to be me. I'm sticking around. I'm winning them. <laughs> He's taking me. So, you know, c- <laughs> come, congra- come congratulate yeah. us for going to the Red Sox game. It's going to be fun. Uh, but, no, if you're we're at the greatest bar on the fourth floor. Thanks to Dirty Water News for supplying us with these, uh, these wonderful gifts that we're going to give away. So, you know, a lot of good stuff going on the show. But uh, without further ado, why don't we get into the weird news story of – the week. You don't want me to Run the music. Play the music. Turn mute us. Play the music. We're back, <laughs> and uh, Stash is taking over this, and uh, I'm going to pass it back on to Stack and Smash and let Stash kind of. Way to ruin our show. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I, I just saved the show. You just steamrolled us yeah. on our own show, Steve. Stash rolled us. And take it away. All right, guys, this, this weird news story actually is coming from Topsfield, Massachusetts this week. Um, if you were driving down 95, your life was in danger. On, what was it, Wednesday, I think? I believe so. Yeah, on Wednesday. Smashed through a windshield of a car. Massachusetts State Police say the axe bounced out of a landscaper's dump truck at about 11 a.m. Wednesday on southbound Interstate 95 in Topsfield. They released a photo showing the axe with a corner of its blade stuck into the passenger side of the car's dashboard. The handle was sticking through the windshield. Police say the car's passenger was shaken up but not hurt. The truck driver from Peabody Mass. A two hundred dollar fine, so I guess that's a fine. Like, <laughs> like oh, what's fine? Two, that's it. A yeah. two hundred dollar fine for almost murdering somebody. Yeah, for for almost <laughs> sending insanity. Yeah, police say it could have been worse if the car's driver hadn't been obeying the sixty five mile an hour speed limit. Police will not identify the motorist in this case, but can, can it's like Final Destination. It's it really like is. you're just driving down the street and then this freaking axe just is your face off and <laughs> goes right into the dashboard. If you saw the picture of it, I'm going to we're going to tweet it out right now from Stack and Smash. If you're not following us on Twitter, follow us right now. Stack and Smash. We're about to tweet out a picture of this. It was insane. It literally looks like something like out of like a bad horror movie. 
Uh, here it is. So this was the axe that smashed through the windshield of the passenger <laughs> side of a vehicle. And you see that this, <laughs> this girl's still sitting in the car. I don't know if she's still in shock or whatever. I got a mosquito. I'm going to get the axe. <laughs> <laughs> Find me a landscaping company. We got to get rid of this. Uh, but, yeah, insanity. Like, what would you guys be – what would be going through your head if that happened to you? Like, can you – I can't even fathom, like, what I'd be thinking, like, as I'm just sitting there, like, oh, that's an axe coming at my face that I can't move out of the way of. I, I don't know. I'd I probably I jump the same as if a fly hit my window, honestly. <laughs> like, anything <laughs> that comes, like, towards me when I'm driving, it's just, like, instant, like, to the left. Right. It's, like, right in my face. Yeah. So you would, you would react to splattering a bug on your windshield as the same as an axe being this close. Probably. To cutting off your mustache. <laughs> wow, it is damaging the mustache. It is. It is. Mustaches. So much fail whale that we could be using right now <laughs> <laughs> that just isn't happening. It is what it is. And that's it for the new, the weird news story of the week. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, why don't we give Ronnie Barta a call and get into Yes, Ronnie Barta, like we said, poker pro, set a world record recently this year. So congratulations to him. Uh, and in the, I guess in the meantime, I will plug everything else. So basically, follow us on Facebook. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com. <laughs> We're also on Twitter, Stack and Smash, SoundCloud. We have archived episodes, soundcloud.com slash Stack and Smash Radio, and uh, all that other fun stuff. But uh, I guess I'll take the moment to talk to you. So you've been a part of the podcast show on. Hey, what's going on, man? All right, cool. We're going to be going on shortly. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Glad you didn't wait for breaks. Like that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, everything's been going well. I've been honored to be a part of the fantasy and doing some behind the scenes stuff, which is pretty cool. So, um, so that's it. And I don't want to talk to you anymore. Instead, let's talk to Ronnie. All right, we got Ronnie on the phone. How's it going, Ronnie? What's up, guys? How you doing? We're doing pretty well. So, you were the first poker player to ever cash in five consecutive years at the World Series of Poker main event, main event correct? That's true. That's correct, yes. That's, that's an amazing feat. I don't know if people understand the size of these fields. It's between 500 players at a time, and it's only the top 10% roughly that gets paid. So for somebody to go through these fields, it's just insanity. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, the first day I did it, uh, first year I cashed. I mean, actually, my first main event I played in 2000. And I didn't play in 07, 08, and 09 because um, I was over in Israel uh, every time the main event was going on. But, um, yeah, my first main event back was 2010, and that field actually had 7,300 and, like, 20 players. And, oh, uh, yeah, that was that was the, the, the last year before Black Friday, correct? Exactly. That was my deepest finish, and I took 24th there. And, uh... Couple years, I had some like you know 500 and 400 place finishes. You know, got into the money pretty deep, not deep that deep, but like you know a couple hundred in the money, and just uh, lost some huge flips or you know got coolered and uh, and then fourth so with 124 left, I get in aces versus king ten. Uh, I have I have about you know about 20 big blinds, a little under 20 big blinds, but if I went ahead, I would have been clear like you know had a chance to do something and. Uh, Guy three bet called off King Ten uh, where he wasn't getting the right price, but he had a lot of chips, so he wanted to gamble. And uh, this year I got in pretty got in pretty deep again. This is the only first the first year that uh, I was pretty short on the bubble. The last previous four years I had no shot of not cashing. Cause I had a huge stack on the bubble. This year was a chance of me actually bubbling and um, did not. Got in, tripped up a little. Got in versus Kings, uh, Kings versus Ace King, and got rivered an Ace for like a 45 big uh, stack. You know, had like a decent shot, a little under average. With you know, go deep every year, and uh, people always ask me how I do it, and you know, I just tell them it's, it's a lot of different different things. Yeah, you know. Right, and that, that's my biggest problem with the main event, and that's why I'm not um, not against playing it. Of course, nobody's against playing it, but just the the amount of amateurs that are in that field, with you know, they're not getting the right price to call, but they're just calling because that's what they would do in a home game, or you know, that you know what I'm. Tournament at this point in time, I mean it's great for the money and makes it easier for players like yourself to run deeper. But it's it's still just I'd rather get my money in on a better tournament. You know what I mean? Well, 
I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I mean, the main, I mean, um, I always not to dis, not to disagree with what you're saying because I understand what you're saying and I don't know where you're coming from. But uh, a lot of players I run into always say, "Hey, you know, I don't, I hate what they're doing," and I kind of shoot against that a little because. In my mind, I want to play with people that don't know what they're doing. I mean, even though it's tough to put players that don't know what they're doing on hands, and it's really hard, but in the long run, these are the players that are going to be, you know, making huge mistakes. You know, I, I don't want to sit at a, play, a table with really, point. like, That's tough good. players. I mean, yeah, if you can find mediocre players that, like, aren't that great but aren't that bad, and you kind of know where they are, and their hands are just face up, and they just got an ABC, it's easier. But I'd rather play with a guy who's just, like, you know, putting it all in with, uh, with ace-jack off, three flop lucky gets lucky so. yeah that's a good point as well um so just to, th we are on our local boston show and just to let everybody know ronnie <laughs> is actually from brockton massachusetts so he is uh, a local world series of poker bra bracelet winner which is amazing because there's not many of you guys running around well yes i was born and raised in brockton mass man i i was i was out there until uh, my my address was brockton until about 27 25 <laughs> old actually until two years ago and I was in I moved down to Florida three years ago but I kept the Massachusetts driver's license for a couple of years for about two years ago and uh you know I, I was in uh I kept I still have a bedroom in Brockton in Chatham West right there with my father I still have a bedroom there. I go there and check them all the time my high school bedroom and you know um I love you know repping Boston I always you know got my Boston hat on and my Celtics hat on I just bought a Patriots hat today I love the teams I love like you know the you know just Boston strong and being all about it so I'm from you know and I like repping Brockton that's how they, you know, I mean, I love it down here. The beaches are beautiful. The women's nice. The food's great. But my heart's Boston, so I, I, I'm gladly representing Boston every day. You know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. So why don't we get into a couple of the events you got coming up? I know you got something going on in Aruba, and you're actually hosting some events over at Foxwoods, um, so people can come out and see you locally and play um, some stuff that you are actually hosting, which will be cool. And I'm sure you'll have your bracelet on and everything, and people can see that. Yeah, I do. Uh, they ask me to wear. I'll come. I'll bring it. I'll bring it by so people can wear. I really where uh, like tournaments that I'm actually hosting, if people want to, you know, it's just cool to see a bracelet. I'll bring it, bring it by. I actually almost won two. Like last year, I took third, and I was triple to five handed. Yeah, we were, were actually watching you and rooting you on on that one. Uh, so I, I kind of didn't really blow up. I tried to run over the. I, it looked like I was blowing up on three handed. I just tried to run over the table when I shouldn't have. I should just relax. But yeah, I appreciate you supporting and watching me there. Yeah, no um, problem. on a, a couple weeks to play the EPT, and I'm actually on a, a show that Poker Stars is running. I, ju I just have I to stop you real quick because I have to so let bo Boston people, a lot of Boston people associate EPT with Eastern Poker Tour, which okay, great great tournaments for local players, but you're actually talking about the big EPT, the European Poker Tour. Yep, the European Poker Tour, uh, it's a 5K Euro buy-in, which is equivalent to about 5,300 Euro, which is equivalent to about 7,400, 7,500 American. Um, it's got about 1,500 players that play there. Um, also, uh, in Barcelona, they're doing, they invited me to go do, so that's going to be pretty cool. And then um, I come back here, I'm playing the 10 million guarantee here in Hard Rock in Miami. And then I'm coming up to do something that, I, that I'm pretty much a face of, uh, one of the faces of a couple of us pros that we sponsor a tournament that runs every year now. We're trying to get it bigger and bigger. We used to, like, often the bet used to run in Aruba. And... There was no tournament in Aruba for a few years after Ultimate Bet fell out. Everybody knows about the scandal that happened and that online, right. you know, all the online stuff left. So there's nothing going on in Aruba for like 2009, 2012. We brought back a, a friend of mine, uh, Sandy Swashbaugh and Brian Outland. They uh, started this tour called the PBC, it's the Players Poker Championship. Um, they have small events throughout Florida, uh, Maryland Live throw some events. They had actually a little series of the Stratosphere, but mostly in Florida. And their main event takes place every year in October in Aruba. Uh, uh, for the listeners that are listening on, if anybody, I mean, I know a lot of Boston people love going to Aruba. Because um, every single time I go down there, the six times I've been there, everybody I run to is like, from Boston. I'm like, oh, I'm from Boston. I'm like, oh, I'm from Quincy. Whatever. Boston folks love Aruba. And uh, it's, if, you have, if you've been in the Caribbean, if you've never been, Aruba is like one of the nicest places, like, by far, by far, like my favorite. Uh, Caribbean destination and one of my favorite, like my favorite beach in the whole world, is in Aruba. So anyhow, um, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that that is true. I know tons of people that are constantly going to Aruba from around here. It's beautiful, man. And 
we had 39 people. It was a $3,000 buy-in. Uh, last year, we had eight, had 92 people at 2500 And this year, we're bringing down the buy-in a little lower. We're, at, we're, we're doing a $2,200 buy-in, 200 k guarantee, so they're guaranteeing at least 100 players are going to show up. But we're going to have 100 people or close to 150 people already satellite in because we're running satellites all year at a lot of different uh, dog tracks down here in Florida. Uh, Stratosphere, Maryland Live is going to probably satellite about 50 players themselves. And now, come up September 7th, uh, prior to September 7th, the week leading into it, there's a lot of $60 satellite and qualifiers to get into the to, to get into the big satellite, which is $450 on Sunday, uh, September 7th. Which, for every $5,000 in the prize pool, will win you a package which includes uh, seven nights hotel in at the Radisson, uh, right on the water, uh, the $2,200 buy-in, a $500 buy-in to a 5K first. Uh, it's like three times you win your rate, uh, you, you get to play, including the $2,200 um, main event. And that also includes $400 for flight. So That's, pr that's uh, they're running pretty, it's pretty uh, insane for a Foxwoods uh, satellite. So there's people yeah, it's going to be really, 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 cool. I'll really cool. I, I was unaware of it, so I will definitely be there on the 7th to play in that. And, yeah, and yeah I'm going to be there the 7th and also the next week, the 14th, they're doing the same thing. Oh, okay. So, uh, up home visiting family and hosting that first one that like in you know kind of like the first uh Aruba satellite that Fox is going to run and then they're going to do one the same next week and then and obviously after the seventh that whole week before the 14th they're going to be doing sixty dollar like you know multi table for for players that you know don't have their bank roll up yet and they want to try to satellite into a satellite they can play these sixty dollar satellites it's like uh fifty plus ten to try to win their way into the uh, four hundred fifty dollar uh, satellite so. See into the Aruba, uh, Aruba satellite uh, tournament. It's going to be really, really good because all the people that the satellite didn't get into hundred dollar tournaments, and uh, you know a lot of beginners will be down there and playing, including a lot of pro, a lot of us pros fly out from Florida that sponsor the tournament and hang out. But it's going to be mostly uh, a lot of amateurs. It's going to be really juicy and, and it's going to be really, really, really fun because uh, starting times at four o'clock and we get to sit on the beach, little uh, you know. Um, Excursions and stuff like that, and Aruba's just uh, we party a lot. It's fantastic. It's that, great. That's awesome, man. Maybe um, that week when you come here, you can come in and actually be in studio Friday night. Maybe we can work that out, and we'll yeah, we'll yeah. I would, I would, I would love to. I'd love to. If I have time, you know, I'll do it. I'm only gonna be up there for one week, and three of the days I'll be uh, at Foxwood. So right, you know. Uh, but I know you guys are like in in uh, in Mansfield. Um, nope, actually, we show now for Dirty Water News at the Greatest Bar in Boston. So, oh wow! Yeah, That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, we're actually on streaming live right now on DirtyWaterNews.com. So. Oh, that's really, really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep. So that that sounds like a plan. Yeah. So if you're around, it'd be awesome for you to come down. Um, but without further ado, we are gonna get into the stack and smash dash of five furiously fast quintessential <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right, man. I hope you're ready for this. I'll uh, I'll let Jesse ask you the first question. All right. So we start every every one of these with the same question. It's a bit of an obvious question. It's almost a rhetorical question. Do you like Fast and the Furious, or do you like Fast and the Furious? I like Fast and the Furious. I don't mind. <laughs> I, I, Fast and the Furious is. Cool. I think he's in a couple of them. Yeah, but, but it's all about Vin Diesel. It's always it about Vin Diesel. It was also yeah, a little Yeah, Vin Diesel's a man, even though they both can't act. You know, there's not too many good actors. <laughs> That's you know, what God makes them the awesome, that Ronnie. Earlier. But the hot girls and the, and the stupidity of acting and the, you know, it's, it's, I like, especially the one that took place in Brazil. That's pretty cool, you know? Yeah, that's I a, like the, that's that was a good one. All right, question number two. This is where we're starting. Bear with us. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Who would you rather spend the day handcuffed to? A very tall infant wearing a snakeskin leisure suit, a bull, or a sweaty, overweight kite salesman who only speaks in Seinfeld references. What was the, number, what was the second one? Just the bull. <laughs> the regular a bull. A bull? Yep. I could, I'd, rather, I'd rather sit next to a bull so I'm going to see him. We're going to accept that answer that. regardless. That's yeah, fine. That, that is fine. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, number three. If you had to use one of the following forms of transportation for a month, which would it be? A dog sled pulled by dirty foreign children. <laughs> I can't believe I had to pulled read that. Pulled by what? Uh, dirty children <laughs> from another country. <laughs> All okay. right. 
a tandem bicycle with New Jersey Chris full of hornets. Oh, that was the last one. Or a Ferrari full of full of hornets. A Ferrari full of hornets? I'd no, I'd rather take the Bob the uh, the second one, the the, the bike with. Uh, I couldn't see poor little children push me around. I'd, I'd pull them around. I'd, I'd still pass them. All right. For, um, I can't get stung by horns, so definitely be the guy on, on the bike. I'd be ripping that dude through the whatever, you know, frisbee. Perfect. So. All right, number four. What? Sons of corduroy, Matt. or oh, okay. the carrot sniffing motor magicians, or or moth pile. What's the last one? Moth pile. Moth pile. <laughs> Like just a pile of moths just hanging out. I'd probably number two. What was number two? That was the, pretty cool. The carrot, the carrot sniffing motor magicians. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's I don't I, that's a really cool name. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't like even need one. you don't even need multiple choice. It kind of sounded like he had a name for a biker yeah, gang well, already. Yeah, let, let, yeah. Let's detour and say, what would you name your biker gang if you could name it anything? I would I would name my biker gang probably. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you uh, sounded like you were ready to fire off green, with an answer. Uh, yeah, what, uh, what, Latinas and green smoothies can probably be the name. <laughs> uh, well, that's perfect. Indeed. Glad we asked. All right. Jesse, I'll ask you a question. Rather wear on a first date with a beautiful woman a Nazi uniform, a trash bag filled with Chinese <laughs> food. <laughs> Sorry. A trash bag filled with what? Chinese food. Or okay. a Paul Revere Juggalo costume. Well, I don't want to stink, so definitely the Chinese food. I'm a Jew ball, so I can't wear the Nazi <laughs> uniform. So it would definitely be number three. It would be the, uh, what was that again? The, the, um, the Paul Revere Juggalo costume. No, no there's a awesome. Juggalo, not a Gigolo. There's a big difference. The a Juggalo. juggalo. What is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, those are those are insane clown posse fans. I would probably do that. <laughs> that. Perfect. I don't well, that's it for the Stack and Smash Stash of five furiously <laughs> fast quintessential questions. Thank you so much, Ronnie, for being on the show. You can follow Ronnie on Twitter at Ronnie Barda. That's spelled B-A-R-D-A-H. If you uh, it's been great to have you on the show, man. Next time that you're around, if we could have you on live, that would be cool. If not, you know, never talk to us again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. I don't only tweet about poker. I tweet about woman, life. You know, different shit, random stuff, like funny things like you guys are talking about and, and all sorts. So. Yeah, and your you motorcycle know. gang, moth mm -hmm. pile, and, you know, mm -hmm. just yeah. the, the other stuff yeah. just like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's perfect. All shit types of shit like that. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. That segment was brought to you by Universal Auto Glass. Call Universal Auto Glass for all of your auto needs. They cover uh, southern Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, and Cape Cod. I don't even know if they call it cover Cape Cod. Is they that do one of the cover things? Cape Cod area. That's one of the things. Yeah, they're family-owned and operated. They've been in the business for a while, so definitely give them a shout for any of your auto glass needs. Yes, and up next we are going We put this together. Like I said, we were in Salem uh, for my birthday, which was a couple of days ago, and it was a fantastic time. But this is the segment or the preview to the one and only show, Fake Salem, which will be an episode in October. I hope our producer's yeah, I, paying I, attention. I what they're <laughs> <laughs> something, All right, so <coughs> something tells me Fake Salem isn't running. <laughs> Run Fake Salem. Without further ado. More than a new one. And now it's time for the weekly countdown here on Stack and Smash Radio.
And we are back. So that was the preview to our episode that we're going to be airing in October, the Halloween special, which we're going to call Fake Salem. Basically, what Fake Salem is going to be is it's going to be a series of clips that we do. We're probably going to air a couple before that, actually, where we are going to go to different cities uh, with little to no information about the city or the historical sites. It's going to kind of figure out our own history of the, of the city. Yeah. I thought I'm through probably getting a little more intoxicated as we travel through the city. Yes, I don't know if that... Yeah, that, that's, that's that's pretty much what went down. That wasn't <laughs> our game plan going into it, but it just it, it seemed to work. It's how it work. happened. That's how we paired birthday celebrations with. So uh, if you have a specific city you're looking for us to hit, or you have an idea of something in that city that'd be great for us to not know about, if you want us to come to your town, yeah, and let you know what happened, yeah, if we're gonna. Things. If you want us to know things, <laughs> we'll come to your town and we will drink our faces off. <laughs> Speaking of knowing things and drinking faces off, let's talk a little bit more to Steve. <laughs> we started talking to you, but then we were so rudely interrupted by our guest. So, <laughs> you know, thanks for sitting on, on the show. Thanks for having me. Last minute, you know what I mean? But, uh, but it's, it's great to have you on the show. You have a wonderful voice for radio, and you have a wonderful mustache that finally the people, the fans, see. What's it like debuting the mustache? Uh, it, you know, it feels great. It was a decision two weeks Does ago. It? Hang on. It does feel it great. It does feel great. What does it feel it like? Does, it, it felt like a, a baby tiger. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, two weeks ago, I was like, all right, I can either keep it or shave it. And I was like, you know what? Let's keep it. And I'm actually going to keep it all the way through the Patriot season. So it's going to be not a baby tiger. It's going to be a full-grown tiger by oh, the end of the Patriot season. Oh, you got to keep it growing. You're not Anything. I'm, uh, I'm, letting it, I'm letting it roar, I guess you could say. Sounds Did like you? A, sounds like a segment, a monthly segment. That we can just show a new. Picture. We can just update you guys on <laughs> Steve uh, yeah. on, on Steve's stash, so that that's probably what we'll do. Things we can fit in his mustache this week: <laughs> pencils, <laughs> baby carrots. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then as it grows, you'll be able to hold more things with your mustache. It's like a beautiful baby thing. pandas. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, right? We've been waiting for that. Yep. So you know, uh, well congratulations on being a part of the Dirty Wonder News and the Fantasy mustache Football club. Show <laughs> and the Mustache Club. This is, uh, I mean, it's, it's really going good right now, I guess. We're, we're all together. It seems kind of fun. These Friday nights, we all get to kind of hang out. You stay after and uh, DJ, so I'm going to be enjoying that on Friday nights. Um, but you've been with us from day one with the Fantasy Football Show. Um, so, you know, big thanks to you. Yeah, no problem. I, um, you know, anytime I can just, like, go out and just, find uh, you know, like, provide me with that and it's been amazing so i have heard that the guy you replaced on that show is just super sexy <laughs> so well they 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 struggled yeah with finding someone that could match the sexiness yeah and uh, unfortunately they fell short so yeah you know but it, you know that sucks man it is, what I, it I, is. I was told i came pretty close yeah close enough close enough close, close enough. enough it was me <laughs> The, the, sh the show has been interesting. I think you bring a new flavor to the show, and um, you know, strawberry. Not that I listen <laughs> to it, you know what I mean. But is is <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course I listen. Of course. Uh, but you know, anyways. So uh, what do you guys got coming up? What's what's what do you, the the fantasy football? You guys just had a big guest actually, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You um, guys had Jamie Eisenberg. Which on was on Wednesday guest. night we had the uh, the the guru, I guess you could say, from CBS Sports, Jamie Eisenberg. He joined. Uh, Some Jesse was there for it. Uh, he just gives like great, you know, insight and depth on. I hope you know, so, man. <laughs> That's what he does for a living. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to listen to him, and you know, everybody that you know listens to the show, I hope listens to him as well. Uh, I mean, he does this. This is his job. He, this is what he knows. So uh, it was great, you know, kind of pick his brain for a little bit, and uh, you know, it was definitely he's he's got a, a event coming up. I suggest anybody in the area who's interested in fantasy football go. He's going to be there live with a couple other guys. Um, I'm really excited to meet him in uh, person, and hopefully we can have him on again. Yeah, that should be cool. Yeah, it was a, it was a good interview. He seems to know his stuff. Uh, the fantasy football season is just kicking off. I mean, uh, what do you guys have in store for the show? What is, what's, your, what's your game plan? What's it, I mean, you guys got visual now. It's different. You know, yeah. Just you guys got anything lined up, anything exciting? Am I putting you on the spot too much? <laughs> no, I mean, you were there when we talked about it kind of the other night. Um, with, you know, with video comes, you know, we can go out and we can interview with people around the bar. Uh, we can ask people just live questions outside the bar, and we can interact with the fans more via camera, via Twitter. It, it just kind of, you know, opens yourself up 
And uh, definitely that Jamie Eisenberg interview helped that because following. So hopefully that opened up, you know, our following a little bit more as well. Um, Any like you do fantasy football shows for people to listen for their players. It, we don't do it for ourselves. Right. So uh, the more we can reach the fans, I think the better. Yeah, try, you guys try to give them a different insight from what everybody else is getting. So yeah, from what your you average know. people are, and that's what happens when you bring in the guests and everything like that. But uh, we are wrapping up the show, so you can follow Steve on Twitter. Steve, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Show you can tune in. They aired from seven to eight. Is that going to be a permanent fix? I hope so. You hope so. All right, cool. So tune in each week. They go on right before us. Tough act to follow. You know, but we're going to try. You yeah, guys did so. pretty well, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, follow us on Twitter at Stack and Smash. We are giving away a pair of Red Sox tickets. Unfortunately, we forgot to come up with something for a reason to give them out. So, Red Sox tickets? Uh, you, just have to, you have to sing the <laughs> Red Sox national anthem to us. <laughs> you don't, but tweet at us, and we'll give, out to, we'll give it out to a, a Twitter guest, uh, somebody who tweets at us during the show, at Stack and Smash come up with the most hilarious tweet. How about that? Come up with a funny tweet to us about Steve's mustache. All right. I All right. like it. Hashtag Steve. Next week we'll be back. Next week on the show we are going to have a segment featuring the very talented Colin Campbell. Colin is also known as Kilted Colin, street performer, performs down in Boston Commons, Quincy Market. All I don't know Boston Commons. Anyways, performs. His show is amazing. I caught it by accident actually uh, about a week ago, and it was, it was hilarious. Funny guy. Smash Radio on iTunes as well as SoundCloud. Follow us. I am at Double Take Jesse. I'm at King Coakley. He's Uncle Stav. And, uh, and don't forget to follow at Ronnie Botter as well. And if you have any information, any questions on the information supplied for his show, for his events coming up at Foxwoods, hit one of us up or actually hit him up directly on yes. Twitter. Yes. In the after party tonight, if you are in the area, swing down to the greatest bar. We're on the fourth floor. I'm about to jump on the turntables. I have Paul with me, the other half of Double Take. It's our first time playing uh, since yesterday together. So it's, it's going to be new it's and crazy. amazing. It's going to be crazy. It's a reunion. Reunion, reunion since yesterday. But uh, big thanks to everybody that tuned in. Thanks for coming out. Uh, come down. Or thanks for tuning in. Come down. Join us. Fourth floor of the greatest bar, Boston, Massachusetts, 262 Friend Street. Join us. And let's tune in next week. Dirtywaternews.com. Stack and Smash Radio. <laughs> Thank you.